everybody. This is Christine Bertram and I'm coming to you live from my hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Are you ready for a night of fun stamping, making three cards featuring three different bundles or stamp sets? <laughs> They're going to be good. <laughs> I am going to try to find myself so that we're all set up. I was all ready to be live at 558 and actually be a minute early, like we were last week. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I need my glasses. And I had to go find them in my backpack. And then I had to have some hand lotion on. <laughs> and then I had never created the event for tonight. So I had to go into Switcher Studio and do that really quick. So it ended up being a minute after you guys. I was tardy, so sorry. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna try to find this and see why, uh, see who's with me already. It's Thursday already. Isn't that hard to believe? How fast does that time go? Okay, I think I found it. I'm wearing that shirt. Hi, Sandy. There's Cindy. Woohoo! From Southern Virginia. Thank you for sharing already. You're awesome. Hi, Tammy Steckling. All right, we found it, and we've got eight live ones already. Ooh, already eleven. Look at that. So, and then of course my phone wasn't charged, <laughs> so I gotta have it plugged in. So, you guys, we're gonna have. 80 degree weather here this weekend. My mom, the weather lady, told me. And so be prepared for a little heat if you're from the area, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, or surrounding area. <laughs> Hi, Barb Johnson. Um, she said to make sure that the air conditioner is um, locked and loaded. Uh, like last Thursday, if you watched, Kelly and I were basically freezing <laughs> in here. So, oh, hi, Donna. Hi, Arliss. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Shannon. So, I don't know what I have for news for you guys. It's already September 16th. It's crazy that half of September is gone. I feel like I say that to you every month, and then all of a sudden the month is gone. Hi, Anna Rebidu. Hi, Kathy Groves. So, tomorrow, stay tuned because we're going to be doing the celebration hoorah-ra class. Hi, Ethel. I don't feel alive. I'm super tired. Oh, no. Well, if you need to take a nap and turn me off, <laughs> make sure to do that because you know you can always catch the replay. So I want to fill you guys in what's coming in the rest of the month. Uh, and I have a confession to make. I have a confession to make. Oh my gosh. Hi, Kara. So I think I have everything all together most of the time. <laughs> but it's what you don't know that you don't know, right? Yes, 80 degrees is hot here. <laughs> not, not in other parts of the world, Kathy, but definitely it's hot here, especially for September. We're going into fall. So to have, it's like what we call our, and I don't care if this is politically incorrect or correct, but it's always been referred to our Indian summer. And so uh, normally in September, it starts to cool off. And then if we get an 80 degree spell, that's what we call it. And it's been like that since hundreds of years, I'm sure. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it is going to be a little bit warmer, but I love the heat. So I'm good with that. So my confession for you guys is if you recall back in July, I had some email issues. Hi, Randy from Southwest Michigan. And then there's Brenda Wood. Woohoo. I had email issues and I had to uh, go to my Squarespace, which is what I use for my website. And I put in like an email program so that I could do multi, like, um, Lots of people getting the email at one time to advertise for my classes because my MSN email address kind of kicked me out, locked me out. Hi, Kathy King. Um, and so, well, what that all entailed is I send all my class announcements who, if you guys are on my email distribution list, you get an email from me and it's from Christine at cardsbychrispy.com. Well, that's all fine and dandy, except for when you guys reply to those emails, they go into that email address. Hi, Ann Bellinger. And... I have a confession. I had to shut down my computer sometime in the middle of August. Normally I just leave it up running, never shut it down. It's like a workhorse. It just keeps going. And I had to shut it down for some sort of an update. And that email address is in a separate window by itself in an account that you can't link to Gmail and I can't link it. Hi, Deb Norman. And I can't link it to, <laughs> I couldn't. So when I shut that down, I forgot all about it. I'll be honest with you. I forgot all about that email address. And for the life of me, I'm like, okay, it's just life went on. Blah, oh, blah, 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 as, as they would say from the show. <laughs> and that's what happened to Tammy and Deb and um, Dawn. And I would have to say about 50 people emailed me. Well, maybe not 50. There were 50 or so emails, um, probably with a, maybe 20 to 25 people. 
oh, you know what I did one afternoon, like this weekend? <laughs> I went through emails, or actually it was even yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. So now that I have it all figured out, <laughs> one more email address to keep track of, I put an automatic forwarding on that email address. I tried to the other day and it wouldn't let me. And yeah, so guys, <laughs> thanks, Cindy. I feel better that I'm not the only one that happened to. So, so now what I did is I put an automatic forwarding. So if anybody replies to a, in a class email that I send, you guys, it'll go right to my Chris M. Bertram at msn.com. People were emailing me and saying, hey, did you get my email? Did you get my email? Because it's not like me to take eight days or 12 days to respond to an email. You guys, I'm pretty punctual. And so I have to apologize. There was a bunch of you that that happened to. And so just know that I primarily work in Chris M. Bertram at MSN msn.com 24 seven a day. Well, not like all the time, but like, let's just say that I check that one regularly. And the, if you email the Christine at cards by crispy.com, it'll forward now to the other one. So <laughs> gotta love technology, you guys. And the other thing too, is like, I'm trying to consolidate as many, like if you talk to me in Facebook messenger, let's talk in Facebook Messenger. If you talk to me in texting, we're gonna keep it in texting. If you email me, let's keep it in email. Like if you Facebook private message me, like it's just keeping the conversation all in one loop, you guys. So it just helps me to be as efficient as possible. Hi, Shauna Burns. Yes, you gotta love technology though. So that was my little hiccup, you guys. Hi, Gwen, that happened over the last three weeks and we fixed it and we're moving on. And just know that if you ever can't get a hold of me or if I don't respond within a day, two, to, well, I'd say two to three days, just reach out again and just say, hey, did you get my email? <laughs> so all's good. So let me show you guys a beautiful card, a beautiful card here. Oh man. Kelly did this one for the Technique Thursday today. So if you missed this, hi, Bonnie Kelly. If you guys missed this card today, she did a Technique Thursday video on it. You should watch it, it is so pretty. And she did, hi, Chris Dudarenke. Um, <laughs> she did this lamb technique all the way down the side. Can you see there's a little bit of glistening ribbon? Um, so awesome, awesome. So. She didn't do it inside, but she did put it inside in for me. <laughs> so, but it's so sharp. You guys, it looks like the sunset and it's, oh, it's so pretty. And she's got some of these little gems on here. Very, very pretty. Um, yes, I don't know, Shannon, why you were getting kicked out. I'm watching it and I haven't froze yet. So I'm so excited for that. All right, so what's coming up, you guys? I'm gonna run through some cards with you really quick so you can see what I've got coming up in case you wanna sign up for anything. Um, I don't have any of this one left, you guys. This is all sold out. But, oh, Bonnie got her Kelly, to, or Bonnie got her Kelly today. Bonnie got her card today. That's awesome. Um, so this one is for tomorrow night, and you guys can stay tuned for 5.30 Central, 5.30, not 5, not 6, it's 5.30, a little bit closer after work. Hi, Jean Maxwell. Hi, Lori from Lake Elmo. This is what we're going to be making tomorrow night. This is the Celebration Who Rah Rah class. And um, it's all sold out, you guys. I made 32 sets of cards and 32 sets of cards are already gone. Um, all I have left is a set of cards to make live with you tomorrow night. <laughs> so, but that's what you can look forward to tomorrow night. And I just realized that I have a live on Sunday with you guys at two. Um, we're gonna do the Love of Leaves. Uh, let's just stamp card class. Uh, I have, I think, one set left of this. If anybody's looking to get in on this one, um, I would have um, one set. This one, it could be free with an order or it would be the minimum fee. Um, if you're ever wondering what all the details are for my classes, you just have to go to cardsbycrispy.com and go to the events section. And this one's Sunday, the 19th. And then I have on September 30th with you guys on the online class, the Harvest Meadow. And I have a bunch yet, you guys. I over forecasted for this. So um, but they always go fast. They're going to be gone by the end of when classes. This class isn't for two weeks. And so I think within the next two weeks, those kits are going to be gone. I think I have maybe 15 left unaccounted for. Um, we're going to be working on these this weekend. So if you want to get in on it, um, plan to mail them early to mid next week. So this is the Harvest Meadow class. Um, it would be one of those that is free with a minimum purchase. Get in on celebration, you guys. Uh, this would be this class will be free with a $50 purchase plus you get a celebration item plus you get on my celebration board and then the other class for September hi Penny Powell the other class for September is the Blackberry Bliss so what is it Blackberry Beauty ink this is ink paper scissors so this one is not free with a purchase it's either 
um, 30 mailed or 25 for a porch pickup with the cash option, you get a goodie bag with it and you don't have to worry. The Ephraim, Ethereum pack is in it. So you will get the owl. Your cards will look pretty much identical to mine. You just have to make sure you have some sentiments that you can stamp on the cards. So I have maybe 10 left of this one as well. So um, they're all so beautiful, you guys. I have a, a lot coming up for you guys in September. It is so, so crazy. Um, don't forget, we got it all straightened out. Mystery night is this coming Monday, September 20th. It is in fact the 20th, not the 27th. I believe it was originally slated for the 27th. Hi, Linda Hodge. Uh, um, I, yeah, that one with the owl with the tag is my favorite too. Um, I had it slated, I think, originally for the 27th, but I had to do some finagling around the schedule to make everything work. And so mystery card got moved to the 20th, ink, paper, scissors, the 27th. And so, yes, mystery card, you guys, is this coming Monday. Clue number one, the details have already been published. I think I did that on Tuesday. So you can go to cardsbycrispy.com, go to the events section, or in Cards by Christine Facebook page, go to the events section, and you guys can get clue one, no problem. Hi, Zaina. So that's what's coming up. It's halfway through September, meaning that there's only about two weeks left of a celebration. I heard last night that the Be Dazzling paper for a celebration item is already sold out. So you can't get that. Hi, Linda Hindi. Um, Tammy said mystery night is so much fun. Yes, and we always have a great time with it. Um, so if you want to get in on anything for celebration, we're on board number four. Congratulations to Barb Barco. She was the lucky winner of a $25 gift certificate Monday night, and she already cashed it in. Woohoo! <laughs> ah, so yes, Linda said she just got a notification that I was live. You guys, speaking of Facebook notifications, hi, Jewel. You guys can set your phone settings, well, not your phone settings, but your Facebook settings to be notified when I go live. Just like anybody else that has a, a Facebook page out there, if you go to their Facebook page and you go to the three little dots, there's settings there. And in there, you can set your notifications that you are alerted when somebody goes live, or you can change the settings so that you see all the posts or highlights from a, a specific page. You guys can set your settings that control how much you see or don't see from a person's page. And so um, that is what um, the beauty of Facebook is, is like you kind of control what you get and what you don't get. And then usually they give you less. <laughs> so, so that's why I have also like a VIP group and I have a Stampin' Game Night group because in the groups you guys see more. Um, with pages you guys don't see as much. But just know you guys can set your settings. So, oh, so it was late I think is what Laura... Lori and Linda were saying is that the notifications were late. So, all right, and Gwen's looking forward to classes. Yes, they're gonna be so fun. I have a few love cards to share with you guys. So let me flip. Oh man, I uh, I did it again. I didn't. I took the name out. Arliss, I have here. This is Stacy. Okay, so if this is your card, my my apologies. I took what was in it out, and now I'm. Oh, it's a swap card. Okay, I got it. I got it. So. Don't have to feel bad. Um, okay, so this is a swap card that I got from a fellow demonstrator and it was for the Harvest Meadow swap. It came in late. It was supposed to be here, I think last month <laughs> and it just came. So so there was no name on it, but it was just um, just from a swap. And so I love how this the color combination is crumb cake, the gold shimmer, and then black. And it's just very kind of elegant. And then this one came from Arliss and she's watching. Look at this beautiful card. She has the beautifully pen paper with the bedazzling paper. She colored in the flowers because this paper is normally black and white that came from this pack. And she colored in her flowers. So yeah, so she loves new ideas. All right, this one, you guys, look at this beautiful card. Okay, so this is featuring some of the Beauty of the Earth designer paper and then the Forever Flourishing stamps and dies. And so this was for a swap card that Stacy Ray made for me. It's uh, the Be Happy Stampers monthly happy mail swap. And look at this, how it opens, I love it. So that's from Stacy. She didn't sign it so that I can reuse it. I'm actually gonna save this card forever as a sample. <laughs> that's what I do when I get different designs for fun folds. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. But this is so cool. So I am doing a swap with my team and I have to use the pretty pumpkins. And so I was gonna do this and put some 
greenery foliage on the side and put a pumpkin here and put the sentiment over here. So hi, Vanessa Sailor. So she did a wonderful card job. Don't ask me for measurements. Honestly, guys, the only thing I know is I'm going to open this card up and I will probably trace that so I know how to make some for my swap this weekend. Hi, Mary Carls. Okay, so it's a very, very cool layout. I love it. It's the mossy meadow with Knight of Navy. And then one more card, you guys. I was in a the Summer Creative Escape and Jennifer Merle Hampshire was um, forgot her swaps at home, blame it on her husband. He didn't pack the bag. And so she said, sending extra hugs to me. So this was her swap card that she made. And I don't know if it has a special opening or not, but we can open it up. Oh, there you go. Mish wishing you happiness, wishing your family health and happiness throughout the coming year. Happy Christmas. And that's that new punch that cuts out the little poinsettia leaves. So very pretty card, Jennifer. I know that she watches sometimes. So that's what I got for some love in the mail. Happy mail is always good, especially when they're beautiful cards that I can share with you guys. So thank you to everybody for sending these. Hopefully it gives you guys extra inspiration. All right, and we talked about we talked about what's coming up for classes. You guys always do such a fabulous job. As long as I get the email <laughs> or notification that you guys are wanting to sign up for a class, that's awesome. So I really appreciate you guys and supporting me and signing up for classes. And guess what tonight is? It's card making class. So let's do a roll call really quick to see who is all with us for class tonight. Oh, I got the camera up. Okay, so Sandy Wicklender, Deanna Stell, Angela Knutson, Barb Barco, Brenda Wood, Jeannie Parker, Judy Krieger, Barbara Johnson, Carmen Melendez, Wendy Kruger, Kathy Groves, Leslie McMinn, and Stacey Burns. Woohoo! Okay, so this is the September monthly class. You guys, I wasn't sure how many kits to make for this one either. So my note for you is if you get to the end of class and you wish you'd have some card kits of your own to make, all prepped, ready to go, all you have to do is reach out to me because I have about 10 left for this one. And so it, this one was free with a minimum $35 order or I think like $12 plus mailing. So um, $5 for mailing, so about $17. But you guys remember it's celebration. So if you spend 50, you get a free celebration item on top of the class. So at the end of class, we'll do a drawing for a door prize for somebody who placed an order to get their class for free tonight. So yay, I got a bunch of you here watching. Okay, so you guys, what cards are we making? <laughs> I had this class on Monday night, so I already had my guinea pigs. And uh, we, got, we worked through all the kinks, I think, and I have everything here. So I shouldn't have to go running all over the place to get anything for you guys for tonight. So um, just a note here too, my host code did change. Um, so I didn't print out a new sheet, but you guys, my host code can always be found on my website. It's underneath a picture of me. So as long as you use the current host code, you can get an upcoming class um, for free if you meet the minimum requirements. So these are what we're working on tonight. It's lots of fall in the air and some cherry pies. And so this is what we've got lined up for you guys. Okay, so... Let's get the party started. And we're gonna work on this guy first. So I have here some blends that we used for coloring. You guys, aqua painter or the water painter was another thing that we used. Um, I think that I do have a disclaimer that, oh, I might have to run. <laughs> we'll see. I, uh, my bow, I ran out of, you guys, so everybody in that got kits mailed to them, you definitely got this pool party um, striped ribbon, pool party and white striped ribbon. That's what the card was designed with. And then when I went to have class on Monday night, I didn't have any left. And I think I've still forgot to order it. So we are using a different pool party ribbon, which I gotta figure out where I set it. <laughs> so yeah, it's around somewhere. So, all right, are you guys ready? Give me a thumbs up, give me a high five if you guys are ready to get this party started. So in your card kit, you guys, the colors are Cherry um, Cobbler, you need a birthday card for your dad. Well, Shannon, this could, well, what do you got here, Shannon? I don't know if you have the supplies, but you could try to work off of anything we have here um, and make it more manly instead. <laughs> All right, so we've got our Cherry Cobbler, just a regular card base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and it's a vertical card, so remember that. You have your piece of crumb cake, which is four by five and a quarter. It's embossed with the tasteful textiles embossing folder. 
It is a good one. Hi, Mary Ellen from Montana. One of my favorites, tried and true. The designer paper comes from the Harvest Meadow Designer Series paper. So it actually goes with the, I think that I used that paper. It goes, where are you, right? I was trying to pull a card that used that. So here's a card where I used that designer paper that's coming up. And I used the back side of it for this card to bring in a little extra color. So hi, Sue Sorrell. The other thing, you guys, what's different about this is, I don't know if you can catch it in the light, but that is shimmery white. So for you guys that got the kits at home, look at it. You can see little glistening sparkles in it. And that is what the background is. This white piece is for your pie and it is for your pedestal. And I wonder, there's, there should be, uh, oh, a little strip of paper. You guys should have like a half inch strip. Hi, Donna, of paper in your kit. I think that I missed putting it in mine, but I'll grab one. And then your base for your mat on the inside is four by five and a quarter, and we'll stamp on that. Now, I used here the classic cloach dome set, the dies. So there's a set here and it has the dome in it. So it has that, and I've already die cut all of them for you guys that have your kits at home. So that's cut out. And in your kit, you'll also have a dome. Um, your dome is gonna be really nicely aligned. I had an, a wonky one, <laughs> that's a word. Um, I had a weird one that was in the package. And instead of calling Stampin' Up and asking them to send one, which they couldn't, they'd have to send a new box, I'm gonna show you guys how you could work with something like this and use it for this card because at, at the end, it still fits in there perfectly fine. It just doesn't have the stick that's gonna be right here. So we're gonna work with this one and, and show you how you can improvise with something if it's actually not exactly perfect. So we have that and um, the colors that I have for blends for this, I pulled in a cherry cobbler. For, so your pie could be any kind of pie. I chose cherry because it, pulled in the cherry and the cherry here. Um, crumb cake for the pie itself. And then the pedestal um, is actually smoky slate. And so uh, you guys are gonna laugh because I completely told you that I don't need to go grab anything. And now I will have to go grab <laughs> some things. <laughs> so, okay, so we have our pie here. And I think I might run and go grab I think I have to grab the ribbon and I have to grab the smoky slate marker and, but let's see here, grab a, see if we got a half inch strip. So this itself, this little guy right here. So when you cut your mats for your white paper, you end up with a half inch and that's exactly what that is. So you guys in your kits at home, you already have this and we'll just go like that. And that gives us that half inch strip like that. Danny Olson. Hey, girlfriend. Okay. So we'll, I got to remember those two things to get, but we're going to do this first because I wanted the glass to look kind of that bluish tint to it. And how did I do that? I put ink on the back of this shimmery white paper. And so what you guys are going to need to do that, I grabbed a paper towel. You'll also need uh, one of these aqua painters or a blending brush and a little ink. And so I just take a block like this and you're gonna take your re-inker and just put a little bit. You don't need a lot. You saw I was very, very, very frugal with that. <laughs> the trick with getting this blended and using an aqua painter is, Gina Buell taught me this. My girl, my stamper girl, that my, one of my good friends who I've been stamping with for many years, she, hi Michelle Wells, she loves to use water. And I always got these weird streaky lines. And she taught me that you have to not be afraid of the water. Um, so I just squeezed a whole bunch of water and made a little pool here. And she said, you always gotta have a paper towel handy in case you need to blot it up. But the more water that you have, the better that it's gonna create the color that you want versus not having enough color, you're gonna look streaky. So this is the kind of the look that I was going for. And it's very even hard to see, but you can see where it's wet. It kind of added a light little blue look to it. If you need more color, you can always go back and add a lot. Now, the reason I used the white shimmery paper 
for this is because water can soak into it nicely. If you would have used a lighter weight paper, it might have pilled and not good. And I wanna show you what I mean by the streakies. So I'm gonna add a little bit more color there. And if you don't have enough water and you go get your ink and you go like this, that's what's gonna to happen to you guys. And you're not gonna be very happy. Um, hi, Jane. So do you see what I'm saying here? This happened to people in class. That means that you don't have enough water. Now, if that's the look you're going for, cool, great, do it. But if you're going for that more soft, subtle look like that, just to create a nice soft background, you need to remember more water. And what happens is if you go to grab it and you get too much water, use your paper towel and blot it up and soak up some of that paper so that it doesn't like really soak into the paper and get all mushy on you. Hi, Jean Benson and Patricia Saddle. Okay, I hope that makes sense, you guys. That's what I have in the back here that you can see that it has like a blue hue to it. Okay, well, we're not done. Not only are you gonna color the background, now, hopefully you guys color the background for your cards. <laughs> that would be awesome. But if you don't, that's okay. It'll still look nice without it. But what happens now is I have a little bit of blue ink left and I wanna do a little bit of splattering. Stella has to do a little work tonight. She took the back seat last week, <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> and Jean Maxwell totally called Stella out on it. And so what I wanna do is pick up a little bit of that blue color and I grab my scissors and I'm gonna splatter. And I'm gonna to try to get a little bit not too much, you guys saw that you can actually see it. So if you can see that in the camera, you can see that there's a little bit. Less is best, but don't worry if you get too much. But we, hi Kay Weir, hi Karen Carstay. So I added just a little bit of splatter to the back. You know, this was so empty having nothing back there and by adding just a little splatter and a little bit of blueness, it kind of broke it up. And so I just used my Stella pen and dipped in to get some ink and that helped to add a little bit to the background. So I'm gonna let this soak, I'm um, soak dry. It is soaking actually. So we're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna come back to it because I don't wanna put the card together until it's done. All right, so now I'm gonna clear off my block because I don't need that ink getting everywhere on me. And we're gonna do a little bit more stamping and we're gonna do our pie and our pedestal. So you guys have your little white piece here. That is for you to stamp a pedestal, so the cake platter. You guys, I have the stamp set. I just, it's sitting over yonder. <laughs> I'll go grab it when I go grab the pool party ribbon and the smoky slate marker. So you're gonna stamp yourself one of your pedestals. So I always like a silver cake pedestal. I guess that's what's in my head. And then we're gonna grab the crumb cake ink and we're gonna stamp the pie. So you guys have enough on your scrap here to fit your pie and your pedestal. That's it for that. And then while you're at it, grab your inside. Okay, got her card today, you guys. <laughs> Do you remember last Thursday? I had about 20 cards that I announced the winners of. <laughs> well, they all went in the mail on Monday. <laughs> so you guys should be getting them by now. So that's awesome. I had to send some love out, some happy mail out. All right, so I got a little white thing there. Okay. So we're, you guys have a little strip of paper. I gotta find where I put mine. Half inch by something. I gave you guys a long piece. It was just the scrap. And, oh, there it is. So we're gonna see I'm happy birthday on here. And don't worry, you're gonna just trim the ends. So you guys, I gave you, I think in your kits, it was a quarter sheet, like four and a quarter by a half. So you can just trim your ends on that. Okay. And let's grab a little scrap paper here. Stamp off. I always like to stamp off a little bit before I go to clean them. But before we close up the red ink, I pulled in a sentiment. The sentiment is wishing you happiness this special day will bring. And because it's a red rubber stamp, I'm gonna get rid of the piercing mat. Now this set, the stamp comes from Peaceful Moments. It's that poppy set that has the words. And so, I did pull that in here just to have a nice sentiment for people in class if they wanted to stamp a sentiment. Okay, and so we have that done. And that's it, so that was Cherry Cobbler ink. And then for coloring, 
I thought, so there's crumb cake light and crumb cake dark. If you want to, and you like shading, you could do the crumb cake dark, like over these little lines over here. And then it makes it look like, I don't know, worn. <laughs> and then you could do the crumb cake light over everything. Um, and it just makes the corners look like they have a little bit more depth to them. That's it for this pie. I didn't really uh, do much more shading for that. I just used my markers to color the entire pie. Um, be careful to not go where the seeds are because you're gonna paint them a different color. Uh, you could make them blue, you guys, and make it into a blueberry pie. That would be awesome. Uh, I picked cherry though because the cherry pulled out the, uh, the base of the card. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go once over all of this again to get rid of any streaky lines. And if you guys like, also put a little pie on your outside of your envelope. Now, you might not even do a pie. <laughs> you guys might do something completely different because you may not even have the pie. This, it's called Sweets and Treats is the name of the stamp set. And I gotta go grab it for you guys so you can see what it looks like. But um, you might even do something else in your, your cake uh, platter here. Okay, so you saw on this one, I didn't shake, shade the corners here. I just went straight for the crumb cake light. My, tell my tip is getting loved, so I gotta be careful that I don't go outside the edges with it. You like cherry better than blueberry, good. So you guys, I have this thing with, <laughs> if you know me and you um, have ever tried to offer me cherry pie, I will eat the pie filling part, but all of the cherries will um, get spit out because I don't like the texture of cherries and cherry pie. So when my grandpa was alive, I always sat next to my grandpa at the dinner table. And if there was something that I didn't like, I would chew it a little bit. Apparently I would just spit it out and I'd put it on my plate. Well, my grandpa had this mindset that nothing got wasted, even chewed up food that I didn't like. So my grandpa would pick it up and he would eat it because he can't let anything go to waste. So. I guess there's something I have with cherries that I love the taste of the pie filling. I just don't like the chewiness of cherries <laughs> in cherry pie. So there's a little tidbit of information about me. Random fact, you guys. Okay, so we got our pie colored. Now I noticed that this color is <laughs> light basic black. So I completely pulled the wrong color. So you guys are going to have to give me a second. So for those at home that are working on this with me, you will want to color the pedestal in a smoky slate or a light gray, and you'll have to start fussy cutting because these are actually fussy cut. And by the magic of TV, there was no magic tonight. <laughs> so we're going to be cutting these together in class. Were they fresh sour cherries or they were canned cherries? It doesn't matter. If they are fresh sour cherries, I don't like sour cherries. And if the canned cherries, I don't like the chewiness. So yeah, can't win with me on a cherry pie, guys. <laughs> All right, I'll be back in 10 seconds. All right, I'm back. Okay, so this is the stamp set. It's called Sweets and Treats. And what we used out of it is the cherry, or the pie, and the pedestal, and then the sentiment. Um, I was with the cherries for my dad's drink. Ah, yo, maraschino cherries, I love. They are, I love maraschino cherries, you guys. I could eat a whole jar of those. So don't ask me about those. I, it must be the sweetness that is in the maraschino cherries that I love them in a mixed drink. Oh my goodness, they're so good. Now you're gonna make me thirsty, Jean. <laughs> okay, so Deb said her son has the same issue with cooked apples. So I don't mind cooked apples so much. I don't know. I just, maybe part of it has to do with the sour cherries. I like all things sweet and not sour. So if you guys try to give me some gummies that are sour gummies, nope. I'll give them right back to you. And in fact, I don't even like gummy candy in general. <laughs> so my best friend loves gummy candy. She can't get enough of it. But me, I can live without gummy candy. So you guys, I've just got the smoky slate here. Oh, I'm gonna leave the inside a little bit lighter. Did you see? I went over the top and the bottom a second time, but I didn't go over the middle section a second time. And that is cool. It actually looks like two-tone. Okay, so the pedestal is super easy, guys. All you have to do is cut in a straight line 
and round your corners a little bit. You guys get to watch me fussy cut and that is generally not something you guys ever get to see me do. <laughs> Cause usually I do all that ahead of time. And I think that I made up my sample card for class tonight. I think I actually made it up <laughs> along the way somewhere because this was a swap card for me that I made, I think in July. So a little bit ago, or maybe was it August? Hmm, who knows? But now you guys can see how I fussy cut. I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way to fussy cutting, but I got my cake pedestal and the pie. Um, there's a straight, I always love the straight lines. So I try, <laughs> I think one of the things I do is I get the straight lines done first because then they're done. I do the easy part first. And then going around corners is kind of painful. I know, right, Penny? <laughs> Kelly's not here to pass this on to that is hilarious. I gave her that last week. You got, you're so right. So you didn't even have to watch me do this. But I like to leave a little bit of a white border, you guys. I know some people like to cut off that white border. I like to leave that little bit of a white border on. Okay, so now we've got that fussy but fussy cutting bit done. Let me get the garbage here. Okay, we can do uh, some assembly. I think for the most part, this is dry. Let's show you how I put it together. All right, so first things first, I wanna adhere my designer paper to my crumb cake piece, because then if any of it is too long, I can trim off the sides. Get that picked up. I'm just centering it basically top to bottom, left to right, or however you want to look at it. And then if it hangs over a hair, you guys just take your scissors and trim that off. I got, I got mine pretty good. But you want to do that before you put the crumb cake piece down. So now you can go ahead and put this one down. It shouldn't matter. At, well, you could look at your pattern and see what you like up versus down. Make sure your card is the right way and you go ahead and glue our inside in and then this piece I'm actually going to glue that as well so we're going to prep both of these with some liquid glue I did so normally I assemble from top to bottom and in this case I'm going to do it and somebody brought this up in class on Monday night they said Oh, so it's not top to bottom. You do it bottom to top, and that's kind of how this one works. So I'm going to put this splattery piece down, and I'm just centering it. Hi, Kathy. I'm going to center it just like this, top to bottom, left to right. Okay. So here's what we've got. You guys who have these, he's my turtle from Tip Tuesday. <laughs> he's saying Hi. So what happens with this is there's this waxy paper and you peel that waxy paper off the top. In, in this case, I'm doing the top. And then look for the top and the bottom of this blue piece. The more rough edge is goes down and then the smooth rolled goes to the top. So that just gets nestled. Your dome gets nestled into the pool party piece. The pool party piece is three by four. Okay, so now that you have that done, what's gonna happen is that's just gonna go over the top of this but we have to get our pie in there first. So normally when you make a, a dome card, you like to put shaking stuff in there. Well, I didn't wanna do that. because, To me, you don't have glitter and sprinkles all falling on your pie because <laughs> then you wouldn't wanna eat your pie. So that's why I didn't put anything in there and that's why I thought the sprinkly splattery with the Stella pen would be good. Okay, but we gotta get our pie in here. So how do we wanna do the pie? I'm gonna grab, this was my trick for this. Hi, Marita. So I'm gonna put two dimensionals near the top and then oh, I was going to touch it but it wasn't that I couldn't I wanted to have the pie sticking up so I'm actually going to put two three more probably on the pie here because I want it to look like it's coming out and like it's raised up but the question is like where does the pie need to go and how do you want to get it down there so what you're going to do is you're going to kind of get this in position and I lifted this up and then I'm just going to set it where I think it needs to go and once I have it set where I think it needs to go, I'm just gonna eyeball it to make sure that it's straight and then it's centered nicely. And then once I have it where I want it, then I'm gonna be like, okay, let's squish you down good. Okay, so now our pie is set where it needs to go. And the thing is with mine here, you can see in the manufacturing process for this dome, uh, something was off kilter and it did not get 
the extra adhesive really close here. It just got, wherever you can see the white here, that's the only adhesive. So just to help support a little bit more, because uh, I didn't want to throw this away. I wanted to use this dome. It's perfectly fine. I'm just going to add a, a little extra support here so that we've got some extra adhesive along this side here. So I'm actually going to pick off the tape or tape. It's like a waxy paper. And then I'm going to add, add a little bit more tear and tape right along the edge here just to help keep it down. Now, if you were putting sprinkles or something in here, I'd put even a little bit more here and a little bit more here, but because I'm not putting anything really in my dome, I'm not gonna worry about it. So now our pie is in here. We've got our background decorated. Now you're, I made this white piece a hair smaller than this piece. So now you've got a little wiggle room to make sure that you get it straight where you want it. Something like that. And then my cake pedestal was popped up as well. So grab the little dimensionals for that. And actually, this right here, this line works perfectly well with cutting off a strip off the side of your, your dimensionals like that. So just cut off that little strip and then you don't have to worry about trying to piecemeal little pieces and it will go cut at the length of it. And now you've got the dimensionals exactly where you want them on the back here. So you can see that long line was really nice. And then that's gonna get positioned right underneath your pie. And I'll be honest with you guys, cutting the dome in the, the pool party, there was a little bit of wiggle room. I tried to cut it high enough so that your pedestal would fit on there, but some of my samples, when I cut them, I ended up with the pedestal actually down lower. So yours might be up higher or down lower depending on how that was cut. Uh, and then we have here our sentiment. And all you're gonna do, you guys, if you wanted, you could cut at an angle like that, but I like the, the straight edges on my card. So I'm gonna just nip those like that. And then how this works is our dome, or our pedestal is already popped up on one side. And it's, um, so what I'm gonna do is put a dimensional on the right side like that. And then I'm gonna put liquid glue on the left side because if you would put dimensionals on the whole thing it would kind of be at a crooked angle so we're just gonna put that I don't know something like that okay got a little sentiment on there no I did find bows <laughs> so I in class on Monday nobody wanted I had I have three little pool party striped bows left so nobody wanted them in class they actually they opted for the sheer organdy ribbon and so i actually found these three little bows the last of the mohicans here and so that's what i'm going to use on the card because that will match what you guys have in your kits so grab a glue dot and i put it right at the top and stuck my bow to it now the tails are going to be going all over the place potentially so i like to put a glue dot on the side of the dome there and then I would also put one on the right hand side over here so that your ribbon sticks to it okay and then grab your ribbon scissors and go ahead and trim your tails like so and then last but certainly not least we are going to put some opal rounds on it. So everybody's got three opal rounds in their kit. The opal rounds really bring out the sparkliness. So we're gonna do one, two, and one over here. So, hi, Feline, how are you doing tonight? Okay, so we've got a card done, a sweets card, okay? So Shannon, if your dad likes some cherry pie, you could definitely case this card <laughs> if you've got all the supplies. All right, you guys, we've got one done, two to go. And that one went really smoothly, <laughs> I thought. <laughs> yes, it's family dinner night for you. So you gotta make sure that you get to your family in time to make an awesome meal. So I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way and make room and we'll work on the next card right away. And let's see here, we'll leave that one here. Let's get rid of this stuff. And just because it's good etiquette, we're gonna clean our stamps. So they're done already. 
Oh, Anne thought it was a cute card. So you guys, you wonder what you can do with your reinkers. That is a perfect example of why you buy a reinker. I know that generally you buy reinkers so that you can reink your ink pads, which we're going to do tonight. Um, I want to show Deanne asked me about reinking ink pads, and so I thought tonight would be a good night because my raspberry ink pad needs to get reinked. But another example of how you can put a, a reinker to use. So, what do we want to do next, guys? We'll save the beautiful sunset for last because that'll be our grand finale card. How about that? So we're going to work on this one. Uh, so this one is the, oh, you guys, Evening Evergreen. Oh my gosh. Hi, Anne. I am in love. I'm not, so Tyler's the green person. I'm purple. <laughs> and uh, um, I tell you, out of all the Stampin' Up! colors, this Evening Evergreen has completely grown on me. Oh, I just love how it's just so, such a pretty color. So what are we going to do here? We got to grab our kit. And let's talk about what's in you guys' kit. So thank you to Anna and Pat. They helped out with the die cutting this for this class, you guys. Um, Anna did all of your little tree parts or your little leaf parts. So you guys should have a copper leaf. Um, let's show you the dies here real quick. So this comes from Intricate Leaves in the mini catalog. So we used that, all these, and the branch comes from there. So if you don't need more leaves per se, but the dies are awesome. So you could just get the die set if you wanted. So this little guy, she cut out um, shredded chicken tacos on the menu. Thank goodness for crockpots. Oh my gosh, I completely agree with you. <laughs> that sounds amazing, and I bet it was easy to make. <laughs> so copper foil for this little guy, okay? And then your branch is in evening evergreen, not evening evergreen, early espresso. You have a little guy here. He's in soft succulent. And then this is the shimmer in evening evergreen, that shimmer vellum. So one of those. And then we have a rich razzleberry one. So you can see that you definitely will need to poke out some parts if you want. But if you look closely at this card, I didn't poke everything out. I left little holes in some areas, but then I, I left them... I left them that you could pick them out if you wanted to. So that's completely up to you how much picking you guys wanna do. Here's another piece of designer paper from the Harvest Meadow. So that's the back side, and then the green, it's like soft succulent with evening evergreen. So that's three by five and a half. You have some copper strips that are three quarter inch by five and a half, two of them. Hi, Janet. So those are there. You guys have a little, I think it's about, I don't remember six inches or so of shimmer ribbon, uh, maybe eight inches, but you have that's the gold shimmer ribbon. Your base is your eight and a half, what is it? Eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So your traditional base here, okay? Wow, these little copper things are very, very shiny. <laughs> so, all right. Then you have a piece of basic white that's four by five and a quarter for your inside, and then you have a label. This label comes from the Painted Christmas die set, and you can either choose to put your label this way or this way, depending on how you want it. So for on the sample card we're making tonight, I'm actually gonna put it this way to show you the difference, okay? What do we have here? We have some inks. We need Razzleberry, and I made myself a post-it note so that you guys can watch me re-ink this. And we also are going to be using Sahara Sand and I think early espresso. So let's grab all those. And I think that I put the Razzleberry Reinker. Give me a second, guys. I was so efficient. I put it in with the, t the <laughs> for tomorrow night's class, uses Razzleberry. Oh, that's Blackberry. That's not gonna work. Hang on, guys. We gotta get the Razzleberry going here. So, let's see here. Here we go. Okay, so we got Razzleberry Reinker. It's very important, you guys. <laughs> Did you notice I almost reinked my Razzleberry pad with Blackberry Bliss? They look very similar, so it's always important to mark or um, to check the label. Okay, so how to re-ink. You guys, T Kelly and I have been doing Tip Tuesdays and Technique Thursdays for about a year. It's We're going on a one year anniversary every week. I don't think we really missed any until recently where we tag teamed. 
when we both got very busy in our lives. And if you're looking on Facebook page, Cards by Christine, like re-inking, all you have to do in the little magnifying glass is type re-ink. And it will most likely pop up with this video first. That's what happened to me when I looked for it this morning. You guys, if you are curious about the take your pick tool, you could search pick or take your pick. Um, scissors, talking about different scissors. You could type scissors and I have a video on that. Kelly actually did that video, but the bow maker. There's so many tip Tuesdays, you guys. <laughs> if you're looking for uh, like how to do things, that would be a place to start. So I take the Razzleberry, so Rich Razzleberry, and, and I don't know if you can see in the light here, but I'm just putting ink all over, back and forth. But you can't leave it like that. You'll get streaky lines um, if you do. And I'll show you, actually. Let's see if we can show you what I mean. So if you don't press it out right now, um, no glue stands yet. <laughs> well, she has six of them for me, Stacy, but she's waiting to finish the whole order before we make connections. So I still am um, working on it. So, and I don't know if you guys will see this, but... It's dark here, light here, and it's not even. So to, to even it out, you have to grab a spoon. And this is my dedicated re-inking spoon. And you just take a spoon, the back of a rounded spoon here, and you just massage the ink back and forth until it's spread out and you don't see those lines anymore, okay? So that's how you would re-ink a pad. And um, I think Kelly did this video back and I had have to guess October of last year. Okay, so now when you go to stamp, you're gonna get a nice, even stamped image. So now to clean this, what you do, I always grab, you could go run it underneath the sink if you wanted, it's water-based ink. I just usually, oh, go for a wet wipe. It was half open, so we got a <laughs> half dry one here, but still got a little bit of wetness, so you just clean off your spoon, and then your spoon is ready for the next time you need to make something. Okay, so we've got the Razzleberry ink ready to go, but there's um, the stamp set that I'm using here. Let's grab these. So I used the Peaceful Moments from the last card, the Wishing You Every Happiness a Special Day Will Bring. But for Gorgeous Leaves, this one right here, I love it. It's a great textury background. Same with this wood one over here. So I pulled out this and then that leaf, and we're gonna use those. Okay, so on the inside here, I'm gonna use Sahara Sand, and actually I'm gonna use it at second strength because it's a little bit dark. So if you stamp off once, and then you go to the bottom corner, it just creates a soft little mushy background. <laughs> okay, and then we've gotta grab the label right there and do the same thing to the label. So you're gonna stamp there, and you're gonna stamp right on your label. You can fill in a little bit of background texture. Now, the reason I didn't do first strength is because it'll compete with what you're stamping over the top of it, okay? So that was it for Sahara Sand. And then we're gonna grab the leaf stamp. And you guys notice I'm stamping on white, just scratch paper, because these are red rubber stamps. You definitely don't need to have a piercing mat underneath. And so I'm grabbing some of my Razzleberry ink, and I'm gonna stamp the leaf off to the side here, like that, just to add something to the inside. And so I'm making this into a thank you card, so I'm not gonna put a sentiment on the inside. So that's it for the Razzleberry ink. And then I have a sentiment. It's from the Pretty Pumpkins stamp set, which is upstairs on my desk, because I'm working on a card for it. <laughs> but it says, so thankful for you. And so that is what's gonna go right on here. And I'm actually gonna use early espresso. You guys have evening evergreen? That would look super pretty on there too. So this is just going to go right in the middle of our label. I'm going to let that sit for a second. I'm going to pull these things out of here to make a little room. Okay, that can be thrown away. This is called marinating, guys. <laughs> Letting the ink marinate. And so you can see here, the sentiment pops, and then you've got that little soft background going on. Okay, so I think that's it for stamping. So let's get glue happy. <laughs> okay, let's get this guy glued and put down in the inside of the card. And then we're gonna work on 
our copper foil. So this copper foil comes from the brushed metallic foil paper. Uh, that's a set of three different foils. It's like a tan, a gold, and a copper. And so that's where that comes from. Now, how do you wanna do this? This is the question I have for you guys. So I saw in class the other night, and I don't tell people to do things a certain way or not. Like I just watch, and I, if I can provide guidance, I tell people, oh, did you think about this? But I saw people gluing these down on here and then gluing this over the top. But then I think to myself, well, what happens if it's not the right distance? So I generally like to attach these things to my paper and then put this down. And with foil, you have to be very careful with foil because liquid glue is really slippery. So I generally, like in this case, I trust myself with liquid glue. So I'll show you guys two different options here. You don't wanna put liquid glue so close to the edge though that it gets gluey on your foil because then you'll have to grab the goo gone and get it off. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue here and then um, there are words on here, so make sure they're facing the right way or the right direction. And so then I'm gonna put this where I want it. And I'm gonna make sure one side is flush because I'm gonna end up probably trimming the other side. And I'm trying to go for about a quarter inch here, okay? So I'm just being very careful to not wiggle it around because it's very, it's still wet and wiggly. Okay, so that's one thing. You definitely can do the liquid glue. Just know that like, it could come right apart like that. I just, I did that on purpose to show you guys that, okay? It's very, it takes a little bit to dry with foil. Okay, so you've got that. But now the other option you could do is use your tear and tape. So you could flip your tape this over. So with tear and tape though, you guys, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. <laughs> like you basically get what you get and once you get it down, it's down. But then you're not worried about liquid glue oozing out and getting all over. So grab the tear and tape and you can put that here now. I'm gonna hover over the top and you guys just, if you don't trust yourself, you got maybe the liquid glue is good because you got a little wiggle room. But I'm gonna hover over until I have it lined up where I think it's gonna go. I think that looks even to me. And you know what? If it's not, it's gonna be what it is. So that's how that goes. So you, either one works, just do whichever one you're more comfortable with. Then this is gonna get glued onto here like that. And in this case, I will use liquid glue. I, I like liquid glue. I'm a liquid glue girl. They should make me a shirt that says, I'm a liquid glue girl. <laughs> I would probably wear it to stamping things. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna go here. And I'm trying to center it left to right and then flush on the top. Don't worry about the bottom at this point. When people open up a card, they see the top line here and you want that to be flush without having, any, having to extra cut it. But the way that I work, I like things to be hanging over versus being too short. So I purposely do that. You guys, uh, you just take your scissors, you open up your card here, use the um, Evening Evergreen as a guide. Don't cut the Evening Evergreen, just go right next to it. You're gonna use your scissors and you're gonna trim it and it's gonna be flush so that you're good to go. So, need that wiggle time, yes you do. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle with it. Hi, Joanna. Okay, so now you've got all your bits and parts for the top. How do we wanna do that? So, I would definitely grab my dimensionals and I'm gonna prep four dimensionals on my label. And I am not going to pick off, well, and that's the one that got picked off because of the one I grabbed. So, let's just take that off of there, grab a new one. So, the one that I did not wanna pick off was the top here. And I also wanted to, I wanted to get my ribbon down actually. So, <laughs> so hang on you guys, there's a method to my madness usually. I'm putting tear and tape down first and I'm gonna fold my ribbon in half and have it kind of slightly at an angle. And I'm putting that on this bottom corner, attaching it to the tear and tape, okay? So that's kind of stuck. I'm gonna grab another piece of tear and tape and just put it over the top and then I'm gonna grab my dimensional back and put that there, okay? That should be pretty flat and keep it even. So that's securing my ribbon. So that's right about here. Now I'm gonna pick off those bottom two and the top right one. I'm leaving this one. And you're thinking, well, how am I gonna squish everything underneath there? Well, that's how I roll. We're gonna squish it under there because now we, we left ourselves open to do that. This is not secured. So now you guys, we gotta get Stella off of her break, get her back into the working world. 
and Stella her up <laughs> on our espresso branch here. I'm not gonna do the bottom part because that's gonna get hidden, but I'm definitely gonna do the, the top. And then our rich razzleberry, we can definitely do that. Now this is where your opportunity is to pick anything that you want picked out. So if you wanna pick anything, you can kind of go random and like massage it so that some of them fall out, but you can leave it so that not all of them. You can see it's a little holy. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do for the branch is now that I have that here, I can kind of eyeball where it goes. And I'm gonna actually put a glue dot right on the back of it here. So find the back, right? There's a middle section where it kind of meets here. I'm gonna put my glue dot right on that. And I'm gonna open this up, lift, lift it up. Okay, so I've got my branch coming out now, like that. And then this one is, um, this guy is next right here. And I'm actually gonna put a little dot of liquid glue behind him. You won't see it because that shimmer vellum is kind of, it hides it. So now this guy's gonna come on the side here like this. Okay. And then this one, it's gonna tuck in here as well. So that's gonna get like placed right about there. And now that it's in there, I'm actually just gonna leave it there and I'm gonna squeeze a little glue in there because I think it looks perfect just the way it is. So we're gonna squeeze that in there. So now what I'm doing is I'm building it based off of where I wanted the label. I saw, I see a lot of people try to attach things to their label and then put their label down and then they're too long or too big for it. So this way I got my label where I wanted it and then I'm just putting my things in where I want them. And now for the foil leaf, I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on this, the right side and that's gonna kind of be off the edge here. And then the soft succulent leaf, I'm just gonna put a little adhesive right down this as well. And then that's gonna hang out with our foil leaf and it's kind of working its way down like that. And we just need to trim our tails. So grab your ribbon scissors. We're gonna trim that one. And that one a hair longer. And hello, April Drain. And lastly, you guys have in your kits, you have, one of your kits has your gems, not this one. I think this one, the, this card has your gem, your, your brushed metallic dots. I gave you six metallic dots. Uh, there's gonna be a, two bronze ones and a copper one go here, and then two gold and a copper go on here. So you can split them up. So there's three that are gonna go on this card and three on the other card. And I'm trying to think, oh, here mine are, perfect. Okay, so everybody got, what I did for you guys is I cut everybody just a, a row of them. So you got six total. Uh, and what it'll happen is this one has a gold, let's see here, a gold one and a little gold one. And then it'll have, let's say a copper one like that. So you guys could do two golds and a copper on this one. And then you're saving the two bronze ones and a copper one for this card. That's how I kind of figured that would work. Easy for cutting your embellishments for this card. And let's see here. Oh, we're not done. Ha! You guys, we have to remember to go back in and pick out that, <laughs> sorry. We got to get that uh, waxy paper off of your dimensional. So then now that'll stick good. And that's it for this guy. I just love it. <laughs> I know, like, okay, so I have a couple people in class that don't like the foliage stuff. They don't enjoy foliage. I love foliage. I feel like a florist when I can put a card together and have it look like that. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Okay, Dawn, enjoy your scout meeting. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay, so that is our card number two for tonight. I hope you guys love it. I just, very fallsy. I don't know, not everybody experiences fall like we do with the changing of the leaves and the colors, but we get our leaves looking like rich razzleberry and we get all different colors, a lot of pumpkin colors um, and more um, mustard colors. We get those all the time. So, all right. I hope you guys love it. Oh, I just love it. I just love it. I want to make like 10 of these just to have them to send to people. <laughs> so, oh. 
<laughs> All right, so there we go. So we'll leave that guy here with our little penguin and our little turtle. There are our little uh, mascots here. All right, and the last card looks like this, guys. This one is a masterpiece. <laughs> this one, you are Bob Ross, and you are making happy little trees. <laughs> so, all right, so we're done with that one. Let's grab these right here. And I, Brenda loves foliage. I love foliage too. I just, I love all those little elements put together. Um, send you one, Shannon. Shannon, you got a card in the mail. I don't know, did you tell me you got it? I'm pretty sure I mailed your card. You won a card last week. And I'm pretty sure that it went in the mail on Monday. You were missing a circle piece, you said, from the game night cards. And so I tucked that in there. Make sure you find it. Don't want you throwing that away, you know, like the envelope away, and that little circle piece is in there. So I'm not sure your wheel was missing for whatever reason. My apologies, but I, I sent you another one. So things get fixed, and you can put your card together. Okay, so we're going to work on this guy next. Oh, I just, it's so pretty. So you guys want to know where I got this idea from for this card? I will tell you. So I did this card for the Summer Creative Escape along with that one. So some of you might have done these already. So you're getting repeats, but you get to watch me do this again. So if you go to the, you guys, I go to the catalog for inspiration. I sure do. And this card right here, I saw it. I'm like, oh, I want to make that. How am I going to make that? So I cased it. Casing is called copying and sharing everything. And I just changed it up. I added layers. I took the elements of that brushed paper or maybe, yep, it looks like the tan paper is the same. The concept of this is the same. And I used the gold shimmer ribbon. I added craft paper and the um, cork paper and I put a espresso base. Um, okay, so Shannon, the card that you won will be, it was mailed out on Monday. So um, I would expect that you'll have it in the next day or two. So hopefully by Saturday you have it. Um, it got put in the mail with a whole bunch of other cards. And some people have been getting them already and some not. Um, but yeah, so that's where I got my inspiration for this card. So we're going to go through it. And I couldn't figure out, you guys, like, wow, where, where does that brown come from? If you look at this, it's coral, Bermuda, and Knight of Navy. But I, in the ingredients that Stampin' Up! does, so if you guys go to my website here and you go to the newsletter section if you're looking for the recipes for any of these samples it's in my newsletter section on my website and you guys could get the sample or like the recipe for these samples and so i went there and i found it and i could not see crumb cake listed and so oh i just wiggled that with my head sorry <laughs> so i didn't see crumb cake listed but what what i I've, when i tried it for the first time Coral and Bermuda Bay make this mud color. So it was super cool, like learning how to do this card. Okay, so in your kits, you guys, let's look at what you have. Kathy, the good thing is that the replay will always be there for you to go back and watch whenever. Hi, Mary Jo. All right, so you guys have your espresso base right here and take it, burnish the edge. It's your standard size. You guys are gonna learn, if you watch, if you watch me a lot, I like traditional A2 card sizes that are normal. <laughs> That's me. <clears throat> so with this one, I use vanilla though. So we have four by five and a quarter for your inside. Then you have your craft piece of paper. So this craft is different. It starts out by a six by six, and then I cut it down to four by five and a quarter. It's embossed with the timber, timber, I think embossing folder. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. Okay, so that's the same size as that. Then you guys have a piece of cork paper. And I have to tell you guys, this cork paper is different. It's manufactured in such a way that in the baking process, it actually shrinks the paper more. And there was a note that Stampin' Up! sent out in their updates that said, you're not gonna get a full 12 by 12. And it's true. It was like 11 and seven eighths by 11 and three quarters. So I had to work with that with cutting your paper. So I tried to make sure that at one angle, so like you're, when you guys are putting your card together, one of, so look, it's not four inches. You're short here a little bit. So if that happens to you, take it and put yours the other way and see once where you're at. Okay, one side, I tried to get as close to four inches as I possibly could, but I did not compare your cork paper to your timber paper. So if you need to trim your timber paper slightly on one side here just to bring it to down, go for it. You need to do that. But like, let's say this came to here. 
I would trim that off. Or if you don't care, just center it and like even out the distance. But that's cork paper, okay? So it is a little bit different. It's got this corky feel to it on the top and then it's got a smooth back, like craft paper background. So just make sure you get it to where it works best with that craft paper. Then we have these two tan pieces. They're tan foil. And I definitely, um, uh, I definitely, I was reading Penny's comment in that hers is coming in the mail. Um, I definitely did paper conservation at its finest here, guys. So instead of cutting you guys all a full stitch rectangle, I actually got enough for two cards with, um, I got enough for three cards with two stitch rectangles. So everybody got two ends basically. And then I saved, I was able to use that middle for the next one. Okay. So that you have two pieces of foil that go to your ends. You have this piece of vanilla that's three and a quarter by three and a half. And it is not a rect, um, it is not a square. So if you go like this, you can see that it, um, it's a rectangle, very little <laughs> by a rectangle. So make sure you got that facing the right direction. You also have this piece that is a stitched rectangle that's ready for your sentiment. And you have a piece of gold shimmer that goes behind here. And then you guys have your little uh, brush metallic dots that are left. Okay, lots of stuff going on here. So we're going to start with the easiest thing first. <laughs> and we're going to stamp a sentiment in our um, espresso <laughs> just because that seems like the easiest thing to knock out of the ballpark right now. Okay, so this one says every season brings its own wonder and then happy birthday. So this stamp set is called Welcoming Woods. Thank you. Hello, friends. Celebrate. Happy birthday. Good luck on your new adventure. So we're going to do that every season brings its own wonder, and we're going to make ours into a birthday card. Okay, so we have leaves that we're going to need, and we have sentiments here. So we've got happy birthday with something on it there, and the sentiment for the inside. So let's do those and not lose that. Okay, but because these are photopolymer, you guys, I am going to pull out the piercing mat. And we're going to stamp every season brings new wonder. You know what? We're not going to actually make it a birthday card. Because then, hi, Brenda Little. Anybody who gets this card then, for the winner of this card, can stamp whatever they want on the inside. Or they can leave it just like it is. How does that sound? Okay, so every season brings its own wonder. That'll be for the outside. And we're not going to do a birthday on the inside. Okay, so, <clears throat> so let's clean that. So that's done. And then we're going to go straight to our sponging. <laughs> Are you guys, does this make you nervous <laughs> how to do that? Are you a little bit anxious about what to do? Okay, let's do first things first. I have here scrap paper that we were using in class. And I have a sponge dauber. The sponge dauber is what you need for the bottom edge here. Let's get you picked up here. Sometimes the nails work. Okay, perfect. So you can see I'm using a separate sheet to do my um, practicing on here. Um, the edge here is also sponge, so we'll do that in a second. But when I ink up, I always go off to the edge. And remember, it's vertical. So not vertical, it's more horizontal than vertical. So I'm tr this is my bottom edge. And I'm going to be putting a little bit of a dirt floor on the, on the bottom here, okay? Maybe some mushrooms will start growing in the dirt and we can go out and pick them later. <laughs> I do like mushrooms, you guys. <laughs> I don't do the cherries, but I definitely do mushrooms. So, okay, so I'm putting a little bit of a dirt floor down on the bottom. That's gonna be right down here. Okay, but while you have the sponge dauber on your fingertip, if you wanna do this, you can. I took, you can see the difference in the craft paper here. You can see that this is darker on the sides and this one's lighter. I did that by using the sponge dauber. You don't have to, but if you want to, go for it. And you only have to do the edges, like one inch on each side. You don't have to do the whole middle because you know what? It gets covered up. All right, that sounds like a good plan, Julie. This is the one that is my favorite card out of all of these, I think. You know, and I probably, I tell you guys, I would probably never make this card for a swap card. But if your swap is only for like six people, oh my gosh, you guys are like eight people. You would make those eight people so happy to get a card like this. Oh my gosh. So again, it's a sponge dauber. 
it's very delicate. The harder that you go, <clears throat> the more you're gonna wreck the sponge tips. You can see I'm going back to get ink quite often versus pressing harder. <clears throat> you can see the difference here. So I just added, it kind of pulls out that wood grain texture there. Okay, so we're gonna do that on this side. Very lightly, you guys. Respect your tools and they will respect you and give you beautiful projects at the end. So, and they'll last a lot longer if you're good to them. So just a light touch with this. And again, don't waste the ink, the time or the energy doing the middle section. And if you're not sure how far in you should go, well, grab your cork paper and kind of test it out and see, okay, well, I hit there and I hit there. I think I'm good to go. So that's it for the espresso. No more for sponging or blending. We will bring it back to stamp our trees and our leaves, but we don't need to sponge anymore. We're gonna put these back where they belong and put that there. Okay, so now that the espresso is done, I'm going to move the sheet out of the way because we're gonna pull in the next color and we don't need this anymore. So let's put that there for now. Okay, this right here. So you can see it's Coral Bermuda Night of Navy. So I've got a sheet for each color. So we're gonna do coral first. I'm gonna grab coral blending brush. Deanne Nestel, you would be proud of me, girl. I did not clean these out <laughs> from class on Monday night, and I don't plan to clean them out until we're done with class next week, Wednesday. <laughs> yep, we're not cleaning our brushes. They are gonna be doity. Okay, so coral. Ink up, inky dinky do a little bit, and I start off the edge, and I work my way onto the paper. Okay, it looks like nothing happened. <laughs> no, all you have to do is wait for it. So I worked my way on, and if you can kind of see, I'm going in circles. Like that's exaggerated, but I am going in little circles because I don't want to get um, streaky marks. And I'm also gonna keep doing this until I get as much color as I feel like I want. And then I'm gonna even go back for more. So I'm trying to hit the espresso line over there so that I don't have any like white space. I don't want the vanilla to be peeking through. So I am going over the espresso a little bit. So when you have as much as you think you want, you can stop, take a little break from it. And I'm gonna leave that open, but set it over there. You can take a little break from it and go to the next color, which is the Bermuda. We have a sheet for Bermuda. You can see everybody that did this, they blotted off ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna work our way on. Now this is where the mud happens. When you combine coral and Bermuda, you get mud. <laughs> it makes this, oh, I'm gonna hold it this way. If you get it dark like this, you guys don't cry. It's okay. You're gonna keep adding color and it's gonna blend very nicely. And so when you start going Bermuda over the coral, it's such a weird thing that it makes, it makes that like the crumb cake color. It really does. So we did coral first with one brush, Shannon. And now we're doing Bermuda Bay with a second brush. And now we're gonna give it a, a hot second here and we're gonna take a break and we're gonna go to the last color, which is Night of Navy for a third brush. So I've got three brushes going on here, three colors. And you guys can't see the, I think corals, right? It's right here. Oh, you guys, I just got ink in it. Hang on. Let's get our wet wipe back. Gotta clean things, otherwise I'll get ink everywhere. Okay, so that was coral. Knight of Navy now, you can see like, it's been loved. And so you're gonna bring Knight of Navy in. The same thing happens with your brushes. You wanna be soft and gentle with them, not brushing really hard. You're very welcome, Shannon. Uh, go back and get ink more than pushing hard. Now you might be completely and utterly satisfied with this. It looks great, but don't be afraid to add more color guys. I'm gonna keep going, and I'm actually gonna do each one of these another time. So like right now I think, okay, well it looks good, but I'm gonna keep adding a little bit more navy until it gets 
spookier and more nighttime-ish. <laughs> okay, so there we just added a, a bunch of navy. Now the navy looks darker than the other two. That's quite all right. I'm happy with where navy is right now. And so we're gonna get navy, give navy a break. And we're gonna pull Bermuda back and give Bermuda a little bit of a workout. And now you guys see what I'm doing. I'm going over Bermuda again. And don't be afraid to hit coral and navy. Sharing is caring in this case. Sometimes not so much, but in this case, we're good with it. But now our coral looks really washed out. Sad, right? Sad face. Coral's gonna go run and go ask for more color. So we're gonna ob oblige our coral <laughs> a little bit here. And we're gonna keep her happy. And we're gonna give our sunset what it desires here, a little bit more orangey. Okay, so we just made that pop. Hi, Kathy back, and there you go. We have our beautiful sunset in the woods, <laughs> and that's how you do it. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the blending brushes, you guys. You really have to get them to be able to experiment with them, and I know for game night in, what was it, June, I that was part of your guys's your goodie bag and so I hope that a lot of you guys are using those from your goodie bag and enjoying them okay well what's next though we've got our background and now this stamp here is from the set I actually have it set up on the Stamparatus so that it just I don't know inked up good we just we did it on the Stamparatus for class and so I have the tree set up here and I have the little whatever that shadowy bottom part is here, set up. So I like to put an ink pad underneath here for support, for inking up. And this paper is grid paper. You can see it's been loved and used. So that's gonna get nestled in here. And before I do it, you guys, if you don't have a Stamparatus and you're just making this one time, go for it, but just put this on an e-block and you're good to go. But I wanna bring this up a hair, something like that. And that's good to me. You have to be very, very careful with this. It's not worth using a magnet. There are magnets to hold it down. You could do that, but you just have to ink it up good. It's like a one and done type thing, guys. Ink it up good and trust yourself that it's gonna be good. You're not gonna have to redo it because that's one of the good things about Stamparatus is you could re-ink it if you needed to but we're just gonna put this right here and you just wanna put good pressure. So if you're not using a Stamparatus to stamp yours, just make sure you ink up your stamp and marinate, you guys. That's what we are doing here. We're marinating our ink, okay? This is early espresso. So Kathy, I'm not sure um, if that's what you're asking about. The trees are early espresso. I think that's my favorite stamp. Oh, you know what? I thought Evening Evergreen was one of my favorite colors, but I think I like um, Early Espresso a lot. So this is gonna open up, and now you're gonna have your trees, okay? So, but we're not done. I highly recommend, if you're using a Stamparatus, and before you go to flip to the other side, like let's say you have it set up, go ahead and clean this. Hi, Judy Bobo. Okay, so go ahead, clean that. And then you can take this, this has to be at a 90 degree angle, and you flip it around. And now we're gonna set up this portion. So there's little holes here, like divots, and that's where you want your tree trunks. Oh my gosh, that's actually really perfect. We're leaving it right like that. I'm not gonna move that. I lined it up pretty good. Ink, inky dinky do. And now I'm gonna just check it out again. Looks like it all is matched up. Now, if you guys don't match that up for yours at home, it's okay, we have a fix. But let's see what happens here. Good. But what I meant by the little, if it doesn't quite meet it, we have a little fix for that. But before we do that, let's shut this and shut these and clean this last little guy here. And we're gonna fix that in just a second. This doesn't really need fixing, but I'll show you a little trick here. If you guys have the stamp set at home and you don't know if that happens to you, how you can fix it. So let's get that out of the way. So you grab your brown marker, your early espresso marker. And what you can do 
is just color in that with a little bit of color. And now, whatever that stamp is, it they meet the trees now. So a marker will help you figure that out. Okay, I think. Oh, we're not done. Wait, we gotta do our leaves. I forget this every single time. <laughs> I stamp my leaves after the card was assembled, but in that stamp set, there are leaves. And um, we're gonna grab the piercing mat just because they're photopolymer. And you're gonna stamp some leaves on your trees. No rhyme or reason, just get some leaves on there. That's it, got some leaves. All right, now, this one was hard. On the inside of this card, what people did in class is they put some leaves along the bottom. So, you can make it look like some leaves are, what do we wanna do here, falling. Oh man. Oh, what am I going to do? We're going to do two there. Okay, done. I'm good. We just got <laughs> a really sad leaf pile right there. That's what that is. Okay. <laughs> got to stamp something on the inside. So when you get this card, if you're the lucky winner, winner, chicken dinner for this card, you can give it some love and help it get something better. <laughs> I was trying to stay within the stamp set family and not pull more stamps. Um, and the trees didn't make sense to do there. But when you have a sentiment in there and you have some leaves on the bottom. It actually looks okay. So, all right, you guys, we got a lot of stuff. Let's put this together. So we're going to start with the cork paper and we're going to get that attached to our craft paper. And remember, it goes a certain way. I'm going to make sure you're four inches top to bottom. So I've got that right centered left to right like that. Okay something like that. Then there's no reason why you can't flip that over. And let's put that down onto our card base. Make sure it's right and like, yep, opens the right way. It's always good to check that kind of stuff. Otherwise you end up with upside down cards and trick cards, we call them. Okay. It does look real. And honestly, it feels spongy like cork. It really does. Okay, so how will I do these guys? I'm actually going to prep the back of this. Let's see if that dimensional is still good. Nah, I put the wax paper on backwards, so we gotta throw him away. So we're gonna prep this with dimensionals. So what's happening is that these are flat and this vanilla piece is popped up. The cork, I won't freak out when I open mine, yes. Yeah, the, I read that face, um, the Stampin' Up! message about the cork paper, and so I didn't believe them. But when I got it, and it was a quarter inch short, I'm like, oh, okay, I understand. It makes sense. That's where knowing stuff on the upfront helps. So in essence, these are flat, and this has popped up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off one side first, and you can see about a little good, uh, more than a quarter inch. So we're going to put that here. I'm eyeballing it. So instead of trying to glue the brushed foil down onto here, I'm gonna attach them to the back of my vanilla piece. Coming in late, Elaine. That's okay, you're gonna watch so you know what to do with the class next Wednesday. Okay, and then we're gonna put this on this side. So now we've got our, our brushed metallic exactly how we want it. We've got the middle prepped, but you're not putting more dimensionals here. You're actually gonna grab your liquid glue and those are gonna get glued flat. So you could have put the brush metallic down first and then guessed where they needed to go, but I don't like to guess a lot. So I knew that if I attached them to this piece right here, they would go exactly where I wanted them to. And as long as I gave myself at least that quarter inch, it should be good. You get to see a little bit of it peeking out on the edges. Okay, so grab your tear and tape and and put a little sliver. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a couple slivers of tear and tape on the back of my label. Uh, I know I'm doing a lot. Um, I'm doing three rows actually. I think that's what I did on my sample. I'm doing three rows because I want the gold shimmer paper or shimmer ribbon to stick down the middle. But then I wanted the tear and tape already on there. I'm not gonna use any liquid glue. So just center that, that, 
Okay, and then let's get these guys out of here. Then this is gonna go down on here. So we've got very permanent tape on the top and the bottom. If you wanted just for good measure, you could grab another piece of tear and tape and put it right over the top of your gold shimmer ribbon. That would not hurt anything. And then this will go somewhere over here. I've got the vanilla kind of hanging off the edge a little. I've got that bottom ridge somewhere about here. We're gonna go and then grab your scissors. Whoa. And then trim your tails just ever so slightly at an angle. Oh. Well, we're gonna trim that a little bit more. <laughs> My scissors caught it as I was pulling away. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna try to make this side match it. Good, we're good. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, your metallic dots. All right, and we talked about this. I think what you guys have left are two bronze ones, or the brownie ones. And so we're gonna put one there, one there, and then I think you have a copper. I can't remember. Oh, I should know here. You should have a small copper one left. And that will pull in some of the coral ink very nicely. You guys, I had extra sheep and clouds apparently, so they can't get thrown away. They got attached to the back of this, so someday I will reuse them, hopefully. <laughs> or actually use them. Okay, you guys. We didn't glue our inside in, hang on. Hold up, wait a minute. We can do that. Hi, Hilda now. All right, so your card went in the mail too. I think it went in the mail on Tuesday because you won one last week as well. Okay, there we go. So very similar. I think the one on the right, I actually even did a little bit darker, just a hair. And you guys have wiggle room. You can put more coral, you can put less coral. It's really up to you how you wanna make that happen. So, another beautiful card, Kay says. I thought so too. I think that, oh man, I don't know. I was gonna say I really liked that one, but then I went and looked at this one and I really liked this one too. But they're all so pretty. And this one was just fun. I had to use the cake dome somehow, you guys, or like the, the dome in a class card. I also am gonna be coming up in, I don't remember if it's December or November, I'm gonna be doing this card which uses the dome as well. So that's coming up for a class card for, I think, um, October monthly card. So, okay, so you guys gotta tell me your favorite, or if you don't have a favorite, you can always say all of them. <laughs> so Shannon and I still have kits left for this class. Um, I think I have about 10 sets of cards left. So if anybody feels like they missed out on wanting to do these cards, you get all the paper, you get all the ribbons, embellishments, you get all of the consumables. The only thing that you have to supply yourself are adhesives and inks and stamps because I don't provide ink and stamps and adhesive. So you guys would get your bows made and you'd have your embellishments. You'd have it all ready to put together, kind of like what I demonstrated for you tonight. I did all the inking. And so I do have the kits left for anybody. And this one was a $12 class if you do porch pickup. If you want it mailed, it's $17 or it's free with a $35 mail. Um, three with a $35 order if you want them mailed to you. Um, but again, it's celebration. So if you guys put in a $50 order and you use my host code to get the classes for free for me for future classes, you always have to use the host code. If you forget to use the host code, I will send you and it still meets the amount. I have past classes that I can send as thank yous for your orders if that's what is you want. Um, I know you probably, but you got to help me remember because I Stampin' Up! doesn't like putting on the host code. So they don't mind it, but they're trying to avoid having to do it. So, so Hilda Nell, if you want to send me an email here, um, chrismbirchmanmsn.com, we can figure out if you, um, how you want to pay for it or if you want to put an order in. You guys, I'm very easygoing, however you want. <laughs> Shannon, I'll send you the money after this video. Perfect, Shannon. Yep, send me $17 via Facebook pay and then you're good to go. Um, I'll send those cards out to you in the mail. Unless you're signed up for, you guys, if anybody's signed up for um, the Harvest Metal class and they want these kits, I can add them at no charge to a future class that I'm mailing next week, and then you could save shipping. So we can always figure that out, but if you're not taking another class in the near future, then um, we'll go that route. So, okay, 
That wasn't so weird. We did good. You guys, three cards, hour and a half, little jibber jabber in the beginning. We did good. Um, I have a couple things that I want to give away uh, for tonight. I have the game night cards from last week. Um, we also, I had my team challenge. Uh, the Be Happy Stampers is my group of peeps that are on my team. I think we're about 65 and growing and doing strong. Welcome to the newest bees. Uh, we had um, Shauna Burns, uh, Jeannie Parker, Brenda Wood, and Susie Storks. I think Storks, Starks. It's, it's Deb Norman's sister, and I'm trying to think if it's it's S T O R K S. I'm thinking. <laughs> um, I only wrote it like once or twice since, and so I I think I said it right, Deb. Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but yes, we've had four new bees because there was a great promotion going on right now with signing up to be a discount shopper or a demonstrator. They're the same thing. You never have to run it like a business like I do, because I'm crazy like that, but you can do it to get the discount. Who doesn't love a discount? And so I had four. Stocks, okay, there is no R in it. Okay, I knew it was five letters or six, six letters. It was somewhere around there. So St Susie Stocks, perfect. Thank you for helping me get that right, Deb. Um, so, uh, so they got to get a starter kit, which they got $125 for the product for $99 and they um, they got a free bundle of their choice from the new mini catalog. And so it's a great time to sign up. And so I welcome all newbies, I love it. So we did a team challenge for the first half of September and it was to take a picture of your craft room, your craft space. And I had four people that did the challenge, and so we're gonna do um, we're gonna do uh, a drawing for them. Shannon, this class tonight was called the September Monthly Card Making Class, um, and Lori the Cor Coral Bermuda and Night of Navy along with espresso. So we're gonna do the Be Happy Challenge uh, um, door prize or prize, the team challenge prize. And we're also gonna do a door prize for those people that place orders. And then I have the four cards for game night. So that's what I've got planned for some prizes. So I'm gonna have to pop off of the comments here on my phone and go to random number generator. Hi, Becky Harding. Okay, so let's get to random number generator and we'll, so you guys can watch me do it live in, in action here. So let's flip down. You guys can see here, I can put in, so there were 10, oh, 10 people that placed orders to get the class for free tonight. So let me grab my pen here. When I hit generate, it'll tell me what number. Number six. Judy Kruger, you are the winner for tonight's door prize for class. Okay, so September door prize, door prize. My, I have sloppy writing, guys, usually. Okay. Then we had four people that did the Be Happy Stampers team challenge. Number two, Kay Warren. You are the lucky winner. Thank you for sharing a picture of your craft room. We appreciate it. <laughs> we didn't care if they were messy. We just wanted inspiration to make us feel better that our rooms actually looked good. And um, everybody had different size rooms and some were messy, some were clean. I think everybody who took pictures said they... Um, they were really clean and everybody said that they wished that theirs looked that nice. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Okay, then these guys from last week. So the spinner card, oh my gosh, you guys, I love this with her painted toenails was so cool. I made this into a little um, a hello card for a uh, baby card. And then in the inside it says, it's time to celebrate. So you guys, you know what to do. Drum roll. Winner, winner, Sandy Wicklander. You got this cutie patootie card. I'm so excited. We used the opal rounds on there too. Good job. Um, um, so Anna, it was in the announcements. Um, I have the team challenge and the happy mail swap in the, the, the announcements. So if you click at the announcements, you'll find it. Oh, you guys, I love this one too. They were so cute. I love them. Happy birthday. You are totally loved. Winner, winner, chicken dinner brrr, goes to Melanie Howe. You are the lucky winner of this cutie card. Love it, love it. And we have this one. You are totally loved again on a tag with a little baby bow. I feel like I lost a, I lost a opal round, but we can fix that. It's somewhere in the hive. We can fix it because I have them right here. <laughs> All right, winner, winner, chicken dinner, Brenda says. Brrr, okay. Arliss Knoop, I'm not sure if you're still watching, girlfriend, but you are the lucky winner of this one. And the last one, our little mascot, 
with the penguin here. They are <laughs> hanging out. These guys are buddies now. So we use the little um, silicone craft mat to do that. So winner, winner brrr, is Sandy Zidun, a Z-D-U-N. So I'm not sure if I'm saying it right or if maybe the D is silent, Zun, or maybe the Z is silent. I'm not sure, but it's Z-D-U-N. So Sandy, I don't have your address, but I do have the other three. So you are the lucky winner of this little cutie card. Oh, the turtles were so much fun, you guys. <laughs> oh, that turtle punch, you guys. So not only is everybody else in the world having issues with back orders, Stampin' Up! is experiencing the same pain. So I appreciate you guys with your patience. They um, they are trying Frankenstein the turtles. Yep, that was my tip Tuesday. They try to do their best, just like everybody else is just has, having the same issues. Like plastic has a shortage. Microchips in cars are short. I just, it, the plastic is crazy. So thank you for your patience. Just know that it shouldn't be like this forever. Um, but the turtle punch is one of those things that was impacted by back orders and metal. I saw something that somebody posted about metal being in short supply. And so punches use metal. And so uh, the back order, that punch was supposed to be back in the beginning of August. And then it got pushed to the beginning of September. And now it got pushed again to the third week of September. I saw something like, September 20 something, I think. And somebody that is a demonstrator watching me right now might know the date and they could publish it right in the comments here um, and tell us when it is, but it's later. Just like the Harvest Meadow dies are on back order. Uh, the Penguin bundle is um, on back order. And how a back order works, you guys, starting right, right now, they will allow up to 2,000 pieces of one item to go on back order. And they will pay the shipping on that for back order. But starting October 1st, they're cutting their threshold down to 1,000 pieces. So on October 1st, if an item is already back ordered at 1,000 pieces, it's going to become unorderable, meaning that you can't order it now, but when the stock gets replenished, then you'll be able to order it. So I know a bunch of you guys were hopeful on getting the turtle punch ordered. Just know when I do my classes, how I handle my classes is you guys can order whatever you want to get my classes for free, for the most part. Like... That's how I run them. Uh, and so if it's not available, you can order something else that's on your wish list. And then you'd still get the class for free as long as it's the minimum amount. And then once that becomes available, add it to that next order and then get the other another class for free at that time. So I try to do my classes in a way that um, I have enough products to give you the, the kits that you need, like the product and the kits that you need. And then you order whatever you want to make your heart happy. Yay. So, Okay. We did it in record time, you guys. Bobby said another great class. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> so um, they have they said anything about the next catalog featuring being pushed back like this one was? Anna, they haven't yet, but that is a good point. Um, the holiday catalog, what Anna's referring to is the holiday catalog was pushed out a month and it was supposed to go live in July and it got pushed to August. Oh man, if it gets pushed, we're moving the winter career to escape out. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my mind. And so hopefully it's um, not pushed out, but who knows? I guess the only thing we know is that as soon as they know something, they tell us and that's, um, that's, they tell, they, they clue us into things as soon as they know. So, okay, you guys, an hour and 43, that means it's only 744. It's before eight o'clock. Woohoo! You guys can get back to whatever else you want to work on or keep working on cards. That would make me happy too. <laughs> keep using those things you guys are buying <laughs> so or have in your vaults from many moons ago. So you guys, so what's next? Tomorrow, 5.30 Central PM, we're going to do the celebration hoorah rah class. We're going to make four awesome cards. Two of them are fun folds, you guys. So I did three fun folds for the celebration catalog launch party and then two for this one because that paper is free. So we thought might as well use it up. So, all right, no more kits for that one though. And I think if you guys need anything, do not hesitate to reach out to Chris M. Bertram at msn.com or you can text or call me at 920-960-4390. I'm here to help you with whatever your crafting needs are. <laughs> so, oh, it's 844 for Penny. So you're on the East Coast. Okay. <laughs> so you're an hour ahead, <laughs> So, but it's still before nine. So you're good. All right, you guys, lots of sunshine, love, hugs, happiness to you until we see you tomorrow night. Have a good night and a good day tomorrow. Bye. Love you.